Our first guest tonight is a best-selling author, the Emmy-winning host of MSNBC's All In with Chris Hayes, and the host of the weekly podcast, Why Is This Happening? Please welcome back to the show, our friend Chris Hayes, everybody. my friend. We're so close now. We the are last so close. time I was here, I was over there. Yeah, it was very the kind. COVID couldn't get you. Before we had an audience, we went over there and we had we had very firm words with COVID ahead of time. We're yes. like, don't get between. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Um, this is, uh, we talked about this recently, um, uh, not on camera, but uh, we just had the eighth anniversary of our show. You just had the ninth anniversary of your show. And it does feel like um, <laughs> it's, a long it's time. been a hundred years, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think Trump into plague, into war. Yeah. Has been like a really intense run, yeah. I would say. Right, because I do think there's this, uh, you know, at every turn when maybe people have framed it as we're finally going back to normal, something incredibly abnormal and with potentially even higher stakes happens. Yeah, and I think like, I can't tell, I think about this a lot, I can't tell if it's just that I'm aging and the longer your life goes, the more opportunity you have to watch once in a century things happen. Yeah. Or we've been through a particularly insane period. But I remember like, I, when I was younger, I was like a playwright or I would watch like TV shows and there'd be like too much stuff happening and some, you know, tragedy from above. And I'd be like, oh, that's not realistic. And now like everything I'm watching, I'm like, yeah, that totally could happen. <laughs> yeah. Like there's no plot twist. There's no like, you know, deus ex machina tragedy. I'm not like, yeah, that makes sense. That's true. That, that would definitely happen. You're right. Like yeah. we're basically living in a Shonda Rhyme show. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just one thing after another. Yeah, just where you're like, how do they come up with that? I mean, yeah. I even had the like, I mean, the, the timing. And again, like, you know, the war, the principal victims of the war are the people of Ukraine and that will then cascade out through the rest of the world in brutal, brutal ways. But I do remember having the thought of like, all right, well, this Omicron wave. I'm gonna get over that wave, and then, you know, maybe, just maybe, things maybe chill out a little bit. It's yeah. like, absolutely not. Absolutely not, and the other thing, you've covered conflicts before, but this does seem to have moved faster than anything that we've certainly dealt with in the times that we've been on television. It, it has moved faster. It's There's a real waking nightmare quality to it, partly because it's so terrible for everyone and no one wants it but one person. Yeah. And you're just watching this. We were watching it in the run-up being like, don't do this. Do not do this. Don't do this. This will be awful for everyone. And it's, you know, it's bad for, obviously it's bad for Ukrainians. It can be bad for... Egyptian uh, bread buyers. It's gonna be bad for Russian oligarchs who yacht your seats. It's gonna be bad for average Russians who are gonna have their pensions devalued by 58%. It's gonna be bad for NATO in the West as they see gas prices go up. It's bad, bad, bad in every way. And you're just watching this entire thing thinking, like, don't do it. And this one person is the only one that wants it. And that's the person that matters right now. It is shocking to think that one person has that, their hand on a lever that sort of contains that much power behind it. It's shocking and terrifying. One of the things that is different about this, and none of us think that you should just blindly touch, uh, sorry, blindly trust the intelligence agencies, but you know, obviously it's been a bad history in recent years yep. of the American intelligence uh, agency getting things right, but they really got this right. And it seems like Biden took this information and he shared it with our allies and, and almost to the week, <laughs> got it right that, that Putin was gonna actually go through with this. I, it was, A, it was, I, I described it as the Iraq war in reverse yeah. in terms of the public presentation of American intelligence. I mean, you even had Anthony Lincoln who was sitting at the same seat in the US, in the UN, where Colin Powell gave his famous speech, explicitly referencing it, saying, I'm not here to start a war, I'm here to stop one. Yeah. They took a very high leverage strategy, which was to be very granular about the intelligence. And a lot of the world didn't want to believe it because a lot of the world thought this was a bad idea and didn't want it to happen. When it did happen almost precisely the way the US intelligence apparatus and the Biden administration said, I do think it produced a lot of credibility. They have now leveraged to this sort of get this coalition together. It is both, again, it goes back to what you're saying. It, I think it's uh, the idea that there's this coalition is something we can all be happy about. And it does seem like a strong, again, early days, strong coalition. But it doesn't really matter. When you think talk about isolating someone like Vladimir Putin, it seems like he's perfectly fine living in isolation. That's really, I mean, the, the, the question now is, the, and then what question, what possible off-ramp there could be, what con possible level 
of, of, of pain for the Russian government, for Vladimir Putin personally, for the Russian people, for oligarchs, what would produce a decision that this was not worth the price? And right now, I mean, he's been very explicit. <laughs> he just said the other day, like, something like uh, the effect of nothing will ever make me back off from the, the, the notion that these are one people. Right. It does not sound like a person who yeah, is, is, is ready to get on yeah. an off ramp. Yeah. I, you know, there are a lot of arguments are made that uh, certainly, uh, I don't think they're good faith arguments, but people say about me, uh, why are you so obsessed with Donald Trump? Why are you still talking about him? I imagine you get the same sort of thing. We he do. is deeply connected to not just the news today, but I also think the future is, I, right now if I had money to bet, I don't because it's all, it's all in rubles, I blew it. I, um, <laughs> Uh, I don't want to talk about it. I had an investor. I told investor. you not to make it that was, trade. I you made, texted I was me. Bad. It, I don't, I'm already regretting it. But, you know, he, I, I believe he will, in all likelihood, be the Republican nominee. Yeah, that's the problem, right? I mean, if he was not going to, if he's not the most likely nominee for president in 2024, and an and even odd chance of being the president again, then like, yeah, screw him. Forget about it. But he is the leader of the Republican Party. He was a once in history... He, he, he led essentially a once in a history attempt at American democracy. Never really happened before. I mean, Fort Sumter, you know, yeah. secession. So he is the most acute threat to American democracy around and probably in the nation's recent memory and perhaps since the Civil War. And he's still in power. So he's still, I mean, the question about the perseverance of American democracy is one of the major stories of our time, if not the major story. And he is the, uh, you know, he is the villain in that story. You, you can't not talk about it. Uh, I, we were also talking backstage how uh, deeply disappointing it is in a time where anyone would love to have a distraction that Major League Baseball, we're both baseball fans, is currently in a lockout. Uh, you, were, you grew up in New York, but your dad raised you a Cubs fan. Yep. Because uh, he was from Chicago. You threw out a first pitch. How did your first pitch at Wrigley go? It went very well. I got, really? Yes. All right. um, I mean, I did, said that in a way that I'm already <laughs> regretting. <laughs> Slow down here. Uh, well, let me say it was it was not a strike, but it was not it was a it was a ball near the zone. Gotcha. Okay. Like the umpire would have had to make a call. Yeah, right. right. It wasn't. I wasn't bouncing it up there. Yeah. I got I got advice. I ran to Bill Murray in a restaurant the summer before I threw out the, the gotcha. first pitch. Fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, definitely struck up a little conversation. He had thrown out first pitch, and the last words he said to me were, "Aim high." Yeah. Because you don't want to you don't want to bounce that thing. You'd no. rather sail it than bounce it. So I aimed high, and uh, yeah, it was it was super fun. Have you done the first pitch? I did the first uh, pitch at Fenway Park. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I wish I'd run into Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you like Fifty Cent it? Or? I know it was it was perfectly fine. I had a, a, a Billy Miller who paid, played for both the Cubs and the Red Sox. Yep. Uh, he actually did me a solid. He went out and caught it. So I actually had a, an active player on the roster. Okay, okay. Uh, catching it, and he did me a real solid. He he kind of had to do this. He went and got it before it bounced. Okay, okay. but it it, re yeah. it required. A and then he framed it up. Oh, he, fr <laughs> he brought it up. And the other thing, people, uh, they should also tell you is like, almost no one is paying attention. Like when you think about every baseball game you've oh, gone to in your life, yes. they do it like an hour and a half before the first pitch. Correct. No one is there. That's right. There's always like two guys who are just there to make you feel bad. Yeah. Yeah. They like show up early just to like. Heckle. You you basically just want to stay off a of YouTube bloopers reel. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's the only. That's it. You yeah, don't yeah. want you don't want to be on the Fifty Cent compilation. Right. That's true. Like no one. There's no YouTube compilation of like the best celebrity first pitches. None. They're like Chris Hayes. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> Look at that breaking slider. Uh, I was lucky enough to do. Uh, you have a great. Uh, podcast wise is happening. You're doing a special series that I, I was uh, lucky enough to be a guest on four parter. Yeah, it's super fun. It's called the future of and I, again, I found myself and maybe other people feel this way. It is very hard to conceive of futures that are not dystopian. Yeah, you know, like you go you go back and you look at like the Columbian exposition in the 1890s or you know Metropolis or even Star Trek, right? These visions of like we're going to space or we're solving humanity's problems and the Jetsons even at a cartoon level like there's no equivalent to that now. All we think about the future is like Blade Runner, yeah. you know, the road, climate. I would, I'd give anything for Blade Runner. <laughs> that would be a huge improvement. Oh my God, if we could get Blade Runner, <laughs> if my kids could grow up in a Blade Runner world based on how things are going, I'd be so happy. <laughs> yeah, that's, I guess that's the best case scenario at this <laughs> yeah. point. So yeah, so we're just doing this series of sort of looking at the future of, of different things and thinking about how, I think particularly because we're coming out of, the, out of this two year period in which everything changed. I'm really obsessed with like what stays and what goes. You yeah. know, um, you know your shirts, for instance. Yeah, those are staying. They're staying for now. We're right? carrying, we're carrying that forward. Um, you know, the the audience is back. The audience is back. We yeah. like having them back. We do like having the audience back. Yeah. 
So there's some good. Pandering. Yeah, pandering can, also. That's a, yeah. We'll be Pand pandering. Pandering is back. Pandering is back. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, we, 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 we've got some cool folks talking about everything from, from the future of energy to future of friendship to the future of entertainment with, uh, with you. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much for being here. You guys, that's Chris Hayes. Great to be here. All in with Chris Hayes. Airs weekdays at 8 p.m. on MSNBC. And new episodes of Why Is This Happening are released on Tuesdays and available wherever you get your podcasts.